So what I want to do is I want to show you how to set up a line chart. We did bar charts. I also talked about pie charts. So what I want to do is I want to do something for line graphs. I'm going to show you based on some, some actual data how we may have to not just set it up, but sometimes we may need to adjust it. If we look at my toolbar on the left here, we can see that here my line graph tool is showing. Any one of your graph tools could be showing here. Column graph, stack graph, it's just showing whatever the last one you selected. So I can select the line graph tool. I did want to show you though if this is hidden and you're not seeing that, if you click these three dots here, you'll be able to choose your graph tools here. All right, so mine is set up so that it's pinned here. Many are not, so you find it using the edit toolbar tool, which is this three dots down. So I've got this selected and with the line graph tool selected, I'm going to drag out a line graph there. I want to select it and drag it down, give myself a little more room to work at the top. So this is just what basically it sets up. You get a basic y-axis and x-axis and you get this handy dandy data tool. You can import data. I don't have data set to import, but I do have a data set in a Google Sheets file that I want to use. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy it and paste it here. Okay, so here is the data that I want to import. And basically, I've got the names of the different social media posts, the dates they were posted, and the number of views for Facebook, Instagram, Threads, TikTok, X, LinkedIn, and Pinterest. So I want to copy from here to here. So I'm going to go Control C to copy, and then I'm going to paste it into that data tool. So now I can just paste it in here, Command V, and you notice it pasted. I have a left column here is the dates. Along the top row, what I have here is I have the names of the different social media platforms, right? And then this is the data for the number of views. All that I really need to do now is cl click the check mark and it's going to create a graph. But you can see we have a couple of things going on here. Spacing isn't terrible. These numbers are too big, so they're crunched together. These are the dates. So, so what I want to do is I want to do a little editing to this chart. I'm going to select the chart, and then I can rescale it if I want to. So here's my scale tool. And if I double click on it, this was last set up to do 300. I'm going to cancel that out. Go back to 100%. The scale on the x-axis was okay, so I'm going to go to 100% on that, non-uniform. And over here, instead of 300%, I'm going to make it 150%. And I'm going to click OK. So what that did was it stretched it up a little bit. You can see now I'm going to click here and drag it up so that it's not so close to the bottom. Center it a little bit more. And you can see that's a, that's a little bit easier to see the separation between some of these things down at the bottom. They were really crunched together before. And the more you're able to scale it up, the better you're going to be able to see that. This over here is the key to show me which color aligns with which line. And we're going to take a look at all of that in a minute. All right, so this is still a graph that's still editable. If I needed to edit it, I can go to Object, come down to Graph, and I can re-edit the data, I can bring that data chart back, I can change the type of graph, or I can do some design stuff. So if I go back to data, you can see my data is still intact over here. I'm going to close that again. In order to be able to edit this though, to change the colors, to make things stand out more, uh, to change the fonts and font sizes and so forth, I'm going to need to do something else. So what I'm going to do is, I'm, while this is selected, I'm going to ungroup. There are several ways to ungroup. I could go to object ungroup, and when I do that, it's going to tell me that the selection contains a graph. After a graph is ungrouped, you'll no longer be able to access the graph style, its data, or change its graph designs. So, in other words, if I need to go in and change that data once I've clicked this button, I can no longer do that. So it's giving me that warning before I start. Since I have all my data in and I'm not going to change my data, I'm just going to click yes. So now I've ungrouped it on some levels. Like for example, now when I click on it, this y-axis with the little lines here that are showing how everything line up and the numbers, that is ungrouped from the rest of the graph. Uh, if I click over here, my charts and these corresponding parts of the key are separated. Over here, my titles of the different social media platform are all separated. And down here, I have my dates separated from the rest of the graph. They're grouped together. So now, let's deal with these dates because they're the most egregious. 
problem I have on the page right now. I'm going to select that as a group, and what I need to do is ungroup them. So if I click Shift Command G, and now I click on it, I can select one date at a time. Okay, I'm going to select just this first one, and I'm clicking with my Type Tool and open my Character Panel. That's Arial, Narrow, Regular. I'm going to change this to 10 points. When I do, you'll see that number got a lot smaller, and I'm going to do that for the rest of all of these as well. I'm going to select them. I'm going to choose Arial Narrow. I could do it that way. Go to Size and choose 10 points. And now these are all much easier to see. They're still spaced evenly across. That's one thing solved now. I can see that a little better. Now what I want to do is I want to separate and recolor these lines to make them really pop. Okay, so the easiest way that I can do this is I gotta figure out which line it represents which. I know that my highest data point is almost 700, it's 676, and that's for a post on Instagram. This whole line here has to be the Instagram line. So I'm gonna work with that color first and that one first. So if I click on that, it's selecting all of these and all of these. I don't wanna do that. I want to select them alone, so I'm going to ungroup, click off. Okay, let me ungroup that further, so I'm going to ungroup it again. And now I can select that, change the color of the line. Do you see the lines changed? Now I want to change the boxes. Now I need to further ungroup, so I'm going to click ungroup again. Now I should be able to select the boxes separately. That looks like too big a selection. Let's see what happens if I move a box. I selected all the boxes. We don't want that. They're all selected in a single group. So what I want to do is I'm going to click there. I'm going to ungroup again. And now let's see if these boxes are all grouped together, which I think they are. I'm going to go Command Z. Then I'm going to change the color of the box to magenta. So now my Instagram has changed. I have the magenta boxes and the magenta lines. And that's going to stand out and pop out a little better and easier than some of the others. I don't love the line with the box in it. I'm going to ungroup those boxes, and I'm just going to select this line here. And I want to delete the line. I don't love the line there. I'm going to take that box, and I'm just going to make that box for my key. And what I want to do is make the box bigger. So I'm going to go to my Scale tool, double-click on it, and I want it uniform. I want to keep it as a square. And I want to make it quite a bit bigger than that, so I'm going to pick 300%, and I'm going to click OK. So now I've got a square that I can work with. It's easy to see. So I'm going to do the same with the rest of the lines, and then I'll come back. Okay, so I got that all formatted. A couple of changes that I made off camera, aside from changing the colors of the squares and the bars and the lines, and changing the size of the keys and the colors, I changed the type size to 14 points, aerial, narrow, and I used a 70% gray color. So now the words aren't the thing you see the most. They're there as a guide. They shouldn't be grabbing your attention. It's the colors that are popping off the screen that show where the lines are, and that's the information people need. You don't want to make them so strong and powerful that they stand out the most. Add a couple of more things to this. I'd like to put like dotted lines across to show exactly where they're, they're meeting the axis. So one of the ways I could do that is to show my rulers, Command R, and just click and drag down to the center of the box. And you can see now, this looked like it was at 7, maybe a little more than 7. You can see it's a little bit under 7. It's about a quarter the way under seven. Let's just focus on this point first and then I'll go in and I'll do this for other lines as well. So I'm going to select my line segment tool. The, the shortcut for that is to hit the backslash key on your computer and I want to use this guide that I created here and I'm going to starting right on my y-axis I'm going to click hold down shift and drag straight along and stop where the, the vertical guide meets. I'm going to give that a little bit of depth. So let's say a half a point. I can make it bigger or smaller. Let's go with a whole point so you can see it better. All right, so now that I get a nice thick line there, it's black. I'm probably not gonna want it to be black, um, but I also want it to be a dashed line. I don't want it to be a solid line. So if I click on the stroke menu here, I can choose a dashed line. And it's just telling me that I could adjust the gaps between the dashes if I want. 
Right now it's just uniform 12 all the way across. I'm going to change the color, so I'm going to go to something similar to what I did for the numbers and letters, which was something in the grays around 70, but maybe I want to go a little lighter even. So let's go down to maybe 40% black. Now, if I hide my guides, which is Command semicolon, and I click off of that, you'll see I have a dotted line that shows where that center is. So it's a little easier to estimate where that point actually is. And again, I'm going to need to put in a title to tell them that these numbers here represent views and the names of the videos at the bottom. I'm going to do some of that and I'll, I'll be back. And you can see I have a pretty good looking chart that's pretty useful. It shows my data pretty well. The only other thing I want to add is that these dates are not evenly spaced. There's two days here, there's three days here, there's two days here, there's one day here, there's four days there. And the data charts are evenly spaced apart. So what that causes is it makes it feel like it sh these should be evenly spaced. And sometimes in a chart like this it doesn't matter quite as much, but in a chart where the number of days in between or the amount of time if you're doing hours or minutes or whatever has to be even, I think you got to be aware that your data, if it doesn't line up, it really should reflect that it's not lining up. But in this case I think it's probably okay for this type of data. Have a great day and if you have any questions let me know.